All right, in this video, you're going to learn how you can blur motion in the daytime through the use of long exposure. You basically do it by using a very dark filter. The one that I use cuts down the light by nine stops. Hoya ND400 filter. Very, very dark. You cannot see through it. So because this filter is so dark, we can then lengthen the shutter speed which will introduce motion blur. Always use the lowest ISO possible. Try to get it at f8 or f11 because those are usually the sharpest points that you can get on a lens. Sometimes if I want a very long exposure, close up the aperture to something like f22. 30 seconds in daylight, stack another filter on top of it, or wait until it's dawn or dusk. Now this filter is an infrared filter. If you have a newer camera that is not very sensitive to infrared light, you can pop this sucker on your camera and it can potentially increase the shutter speed for quite a long time. Um, the color is not going to be normal color. So this is a regular photo, 1 30th of a second, and here it is again uh, with a minute long exposure. And you can see that the sky is blurred above on the top there and the water is also blurred looks completely smooth. Here's just some wheat I took a picture of and here's another one that I took for 30 seconds using the ND400 filter. You'll get that sort of ghosty kinda of hazy look and that always looks great in black and white. The shutter speed was only half a second on this picture. The most you'll need would be an ND8. And Now with this picture the photographer actually used an ND400 and an ND8 to he just combined those to get even a longer shutter speed that lasted probably several minutes completely white void of sea <laughs> here's one where I took a picture of a waterfall using the infrared filter It's about 30 seconds long but there is something that you can do if you want to still render the water blurry but render the trees clear you can use a shutter speed of one second to five seconds and that will produce pretty much the exact same result if you were to take a 15 second or long exposure. It's best to do it on an overcast day or when the sun is not directly hitting the water. That causes um, very bright highlights to appear and it's very harsh and very unflattering when you look at it. So a dark overcast day is ideal. And here's one last example of just the clouds passing by and the exposure is just taking place during that entire time. The clouds are moving and it just comes out to be very dreamy and beautiful. So you could take a picture of say New York City where it's constantly populated and there's people everywhere but if you have a long enough exposure you could make it look like um, it's an abandoned city.